Hey guys, what's up? So this video is brought to you by Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. If you guys are trying to get into software development, iOS development, software QA, and other stuff, check out the link in the description tab below. They are offering courses. Um, you can actually live on campus over there. They are hooked up with employers around the country, um, around the world really, and they're going to help you try to find your first job in this industry. So uh, make sure you give them a look, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp, and the link is in the description tab below. Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, we're talking about Django and Visual Studio Code, and it's really just another example of why Visual Studio Code is my favorite editor. Um, it's come a long way. It really has. I think editors in general have come a long way, and, um, and, and Visual Studio Code is built using Electron. So Electron gives you the ability to write CSS, HTML, and JavaScript for actual software-based type of applications so that you can get an end result like Visual Studio Code or uh, Spotify is another app that was using Electron. Uh, some people will say it is a memory hog because it is, and um, but there uh, there must be some ways around it because clearly like Visual Studio Code is is an awesome product. So this video is talking about both Django and Visual Studio Code, and we all know that they both go together like together. So with your Django stack, you can debug it very easily with Visual Studio Code. If you have it installed, all you need to do is go to your extensions. Make sure you have the Python extension from Don J main installed. Uh, this thing's been downloaded almost 30 million times already, so it's uh, definitely the most popular add-on to Visual Studio Code for uh, Python. And then once you have that, we just need to go ahead and open up the folder to our project. So I'll just go ahead and, uh, as an example, in this one, we're going to go into uh, this project down here. So I'm going to select this folder. Uh, we'll go ahead and create a... Um, you know, I'll just go ahead and put inside of here, I'll put a new folder, and we'll just call this like server. So it'll be the server-side code. So then once you're in here, I can just right click and say um, open in the terminal. And then from here, I'm gonna go ahead and create my virtual environment so I can have a self-contained Django project. So I'll say Python uh, VNV and then the name of my environment, which I'll just call ENV. Uh, let's see, did I spell that wrong? Yeah, I must have, okay. Yeah, you gotta put the flag on there. So anyway, this is gonna spin up a uh, Python virtual environment for us. So now when we look at this, um, we can see that we have this vir this environment here, the virtual environment that, that we wanna go ahead and activate. So what you wanna do is actually open up this folder, the server folder from within Visual Studio Code so it'll create um, the, the project around that folder, which is gonna be like a server-side project or Django project. So uh, we want it to have specific run settings and everything. Um, so here's the root directory now. So you can see though, um, if we go ahead and, and we um, try to run the Python command, you can see that it's now sensing the fact that there is a virtual environment. So here it's picking up on the fact that the virtual environment is inside the root directory of the project. Uh, again, the, the, you have to open up the folder to where the environment is located for this to work. Uh, so we wanna go ahead and select that. And by selecting that, um, the awesome thing is that when we go in and we wanna view the, the terminal, so if we go and look at the terminal here, you can see that it automatically opens up within our environment. So if we do uh, a pip install for our Django project, that's what we're gonna do here. Uh, I gotta do pip install actually, Django. Um, so when we install this thing, it's gonna install it locally into our virtual environment. So it's not gonna um, you know, mess up any other projects that you may have on your machine uh, that are also running Django, because this is gonna grab the latest version, which is 2.1.5. Um, and some of the latest versions have the best features, but then there's older code bases that don't, you know, that haven't caught up. So uh, not everybody wants the latest version of Django. So that's why you want to use virtual environments. So you could have like five different Django projects running five different versions of Django or, uh, or different versions of packages that the project is using. Um, so I don't have to worry about the Git message there. So now that we have that, if you go over to where the, the folder is and uh, go into environment, uh, lib site packages uh, this folder here site packages you're gonna have uh, Django in here so this is all the, the core Django source code so if you like needed to step through that try to figure out what's going on it's all in here for you if you were interested in that um, but you can see that because it got installed it put it put it in our virtual environment not in some sort of global package all right so now that we have Django installed we can go ahead and create our Django project so we're gonna say uh, Django admin uh, we, I think we have to say .py uh, start project, and then the name of our project, which I'm just going to call this um, web dev. And then I'm going to give it the dot, meaning uh, don't create another web dev folder from within this. So it's only going to have one. So uh, your managed.py is in the folder that is in the root project. Uh, so anyway, 
that's a little shortcut there because otherwise there would be an additional web dev folder that you'd have to get into to see the manage.py file and all that stuff. So uh, that avoids that. Um, also, when you have this, uh, this manage command, um, you, you can set it up to have uh, Visual Studio Code actually go ahead and fire up uh, Django every time. Um, so if we go and press command shift P and then uh, select our Python interpreter, make sure the virtual environment is selected. Uh, go to our debugger and then click on this little gear icon and it might take a second to pop up, but this is going to create a configuration file for your uh, Django project. Um, or really, it's just for a bunch of different Python projects, but you can debug a Flask project or Django or other just regular Python apps. Um, so when we go to our little debugger here and um, let me go back to this area. So we go to our debugger. I'm going to want to select Python Django here. And then if I go ahead and press play, um, this is going to go ahead and fire up the, de the dev server from within Visual Studio Code. You can see it's listening on localhost 8000. So if I go ahead and navigate over there, you can see that we have a working Django application. And we're able to fire it up and stop it from the uh, Visual Studio command line or uh, Visual Studio Code application, which is really awesome. Uh, where it gets even better, though, for uh, development is when you have to actually step through your code, try to figure out what's going on. Because um, we did it this way, uh, you, you can go ahead and put breakpoints in here, and this uh, it's going to actually hit these breakpoints when you run the app. So if I go ahead and refresh the, the, the app, uh, it's going to restart, and then it's going to hit this breakpoint. So when we go ahead and look at the breakpoint, uh, you can inspect path. Uh, on If we, we have a debug console open, you can see all the local variables and things like that. So um, there's just tons of information here about the core structure of not just Django, but all your code and things like that. So if you're really trying to build something, you know, great with Django, the ability to be able to debug and stop your um, your execution on a, on a specific line is, is absolutely imperative. I remember when I first got started with Django, like I had no idea like how to debug and things like that. And like I was using like PDB and all this stuff and like I, I could barely wrap my head around it. It just sucked, but this is much better. So if I want to go ahead and extend this app, I can go ahead and do that. I'll create a uh, views.py file uh, or py. And uh, here we're going to go ahead and create the path for our root directory. So here we'll go ahead and define our uh, root uh, page, the home page, and we'll call it the index. And uh, we'll say name equals index. All right, so because we need to use the views, we need to go ahead and import that. So we're going to say from dot import views. All right, so now that um, we've done that, we could actually reference that. I need to say views, so views.index. All right, so now let's go ahead and, and define the uh, index from within the views here. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy some code here from uh, the Django documentation, but we're not going to reference this question thing, but I just want to go ahead and get a response here. Uh, and we're just going to say the output e put equals yo hi. I'm not going to put anything inappropriate. Not gonna put anything inappropriate. I know you guys want me to. I'm not gonna do it. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna put a breakpoint here though. Also, I'm gonna remove the breakpoint from the URLs. I don't want to hit that. And we do have a bug here because every URL that you define needs to be separated by a comma. Uh, this is just a standard Python list, so it, it's all comma delimited, meaning separated by comma. Uh, so anyway, let's go ahead and uh, fire this back up and hope that we hit the uh, the view breakpoint. All right, so it's listening there. If we go ahead and navigate, um, the page stops. You can see it's actually stopped. It's loading. It's listening, uh, or it's waiting anyway. And um, this is where it's really cool because you can get all this information about the request. So you're like, well, how do I get the post data? How do I get the get data? All this stuff. Well, it's right here. You just reference the object like so. Um, each one of these objects on the request object, everything in Python is an object. So it's all objects with, with methods, uh, with class properties, or uh, just instance properties. But you, everything in, in Python is an object, so it's always going to have stuff attached to it. So, um, you know, Git is an object, encoding is an object attached to that, which is really just a string, uh, but strings are objects. Uh, again, all this stuff um, is just laid out there for you. So if you want to debug Django like a ninja, you have to have some sort of setup in, like this. So if it's not with Visual Studio Code, uh, it, there's other things out there like PyCharm and stuff that do similar things, but all this stuff is absolutely free. All right, guys, that's it. So if you guys are interested in learning more, uh, especially like web development, things like that, check out my Udemy courses. Uh, they're all, li the links are in the description tab below, uh, where you just go to Udemy, look me up there, and uh, that's where most of my teaching and stuff like that is going on these days. But uh, make sure you guys check me out there if you can. And then if not, uh, I'll still be posting stuff to YouTube all the time as well. But 
um, hopefully, uh, you guys can, can at least take this and start getting up and running with your Python Django stuff. If you're not using visual studio code for it already. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Have a good day. Bye.